As bizarre as it sounds, the opening stage of this year's Tour de France will take the riders over the Yorkshire Dales, a stage which is 190.5 kilometres long, finishing in Harrogate. And without a shadow of a doubt, despite some severe challenges en route, the general consensus is this is going to be a day for the sprinters. So we'll see the teams of Lotto Bellasol, Giant Shimano and Amiga Pharma Quickstep control the peloton before it all comes back together for the finish in Harrogate. Yes, the likes of Mark Cavendish, Andre Greipel, Marcel Kittel and the rest of the sprinters in the peloton, this is a chance not only to take a stage victory, but also the coveted yellow jersey. The ceremonial start to the 2014 Tour de France is in Leeds, a thriving city in the north of England. However, the opening kilometres will be neutralised and that will lead them here to Harewood House. Rumour has it they'll be getting a royal send-off from William and Kate, and although it's quiet today, the atmosphere is sure to be electric on the day. Let's go. The opening kilometres of today's stage are relatively straightforward, fairly wide and straight. And that's just as well because with speeds hovering between 50 and 60 k's per hour as the early attacks go. It's certainly going to be an aggressive affair early on. And although it's likely to be a sprint at the end in Harrogate, if a breakaway does get away, there are three categorised climbs to fight out. So a member of that breakaway could find themselves on the podium in Harrogate resplendent in a polka dot jersey. This stage takes the race through the heart of the Yorkshire Dales and we've been on the moors for a few miles now and there certainly are a few lumps and bumps and this is the first of three categorised climbs today and that makes it the first king of the mountains of the Tour de France. Yes this is the Cote de Cray crest at 68 kilometres into the stage at just 1.6 k's long and 7.1% average gradient it means it's really just a taster of what's to come later. There are points available for the first 15 riders to cross this intermediate sprint and with the breakaway of the day likely to be much smaller than that, it will force the sprinters to show their hand to open their account in the green jersey competition. As the riders reach the village of Hawes, now we're just over the halfway point of the day stage, and soon after, here we are on the next categorised climb, the Coupe de Boudetoub. See, Catsong Saint Mars, no, it's four and a half kilometres long, with an average gradient of 6.8 k's, and by far the most difficult climb that's going to face the riders on this stage and should take them well over 10 minutes to complete. That said, don't expect too much action from the bunch, it's coming where it does on the stage. There's little point in attacking with so far to go. But for the breakaway, it'll be a completely different matter as they'll be battling it out for the points on offer to become the first wearer of the polka dot jersey in this year's Tour de France. Matt, maybe we should do this video again and say it might not be a sprint. After butter tubs, the peloton will pass through some very narrow, twisty technical lanes through some beautiful scenery before they hit the final climb of the day. This one, Grinton Moor. It's the third cat, 6% gradient, and it's three kilometers long. The ideal strategy for the sprinters teams is to either maintain or slightly close the gap on the flatter parts or downhill sections, and to go at a very steady pace on the climbs maybe even allowing the breakaway a little bit more freedom. This way, you save a little bit more energy with your teammates and they'll have more strength left for the important moments towards the end. At the top of this final climb of the day, it will still be 61 kilometres to go. I'd expect the time gap to the breakaway to be in the region for three to four minutes.
Now you will have noticed already on our video that the Yorkshire Dales here are particularly open. Coming as it does in July, even in the UK here, hopefully we'll be blessed with some decent weather. However, if the wind is blowing across the riders, that could be as much of a factor in the outcome of the day as the climbs themselves. And once the riders come off the moors, they'll be greeted by some slightly flatter and slightly wider roads. And when they get to the other side of a town called Ripon, they'll see a sign informing them that there's 20Ks to go and that the feeding for the day will have to stop. It's from this point where things will really wind up and the breakaway will likely get caught. Not by chance that the breakaway is caught towards the end of the sprint days. It makes the sprinters team's jobs that much easier. If, for example, they catch them with 50Ks to go, it could spark fresh attacks from fresher riders, making their job that bit more difficult. I have to admit I've been labouring somewhat since that last categorised climb of the day. I've got a feeling that old man Stevens might already be on the outskirts of Harrogate. Outskirts? I've been here 10 minutes. Well, the run into the finish line here in Harrogate is going to be fast and furious with so much at stake and speeds in excess of 60 kilometres an hour. It's not just a stage win, the winner will get to wear the coveted yellow jersey. The atmosphere is going to be electric, the crowd's enormous. Make sure you don't miss it. <laughs> 